What's going on guys, it's Greg from East Coast Eyes and welcome to the Nike Vapor Elite review. This is the newest head from Nike and the third head in the Nike Vapor line. Uh, they had the original Vapor which didn't have a ton of success, it was pretty flimsy and that was only high school spec. Then they rolled out the Vapor 2.0 which was a lot nicer but still not that many people use for one reason or another and that one was only $70 and now we've got the Vapor Elite. This one comes in at $90, so pretty much the standard price for a high-end head. So now we've got the Vapor 2 down at the $70 price point and the Vapor Elite up at $90. Um, so they chose not to go 3, chose to go Elite and make it a little bit nicer. Big shout out to UniversalLacrosse.com for sending server one to check out. You can check out the link in the description if you want to go get one for yourself. Basic specs is going to come in white, black, and gray and it weighs just under five ounces. So they're saying this is the lightest head in the Nike line. Just under five ounces is pretty much average for a high-end lacrosse head, but it is the lightest that Nike makes. So let's jump into what's new about this head. First off, the styling and the strut pattern. So the Vapors traditionally had this lower strut, but then a second one that was going this direction. So they added a cross here and I actually really like that strut pattern. It's really clean, kind of follows this rail down with the offset. Um, I think it looks really great. They've got a chunky uh, side rail design, so not a lot of taper. You see some that are sort of low pocket or mid pocket focus. This one's pretty chunky the whole way through, um, which should help you string pretty much any style pocket that you want. A really pointed scoop. So this is kind of like a combination of uh, the CEO. They've got that really high, tight, pinched face shape that everyone loves so much about the CEO and that really pointed scoop. So this has some advantages for shooting and passing and some disadvantages a little bit for ground balls so that kind of is a personal preference thing whatever you like but i do really like that high flare and really tight face shape as far as styling they've made some interesting decisions here it is a really sharp looking head has a lot of really intense angles you can see here coming across the face that i really like the one thing that people on social have disliked is these really pointy corners here for some reason as opposed to kind of rounding it out they've got a point and then another point and then a smooth curve. Um, it just looks a little bit odd. So it's definitely a different look, not my favorite, but uh, it is a little bit new and that's one thing that people haven't liked about the way that it looks. But performance wise, that shouldn't really impact anything. Right. One interesting thing about this head is, or Lax or someone on Instagram actually spotted this exact head or at least a prototype of it at a fall scrimmage between UNC and Ohio State last fall. So that was a full year ago they already had these production models and did a full fall and spring season of field testing. So you already know it's been pretty well field tested. Uh, it's interesting to see them take that long to release the head, but also it's great to see them spend that much time field testing it at the most of the levels to make sure it's ready to roll. The scoop is nice and rounded on the back here, um, but it's relatively flat as far as the curve. One thing that it doesn't have, and the scoop holes are pretty high up into the scoop and it doesn't have any sort of lip for protection so it's really rounded i think it's gonna be great for ground balls but without the lip um, you can kind of see that the strings are pretty exposed so this is a pretty common thing to have string protection on the back of the scoop especially for stx and nike so kind of surprised to see this but i can definitely see your top strings wearing out more quickly on this head um, getting into the string i love the way this head's strung just because that face shape is so nice and the bottom rail worked really well with it They've got a lot of really large holes at the top. So you're seeing five really, really large holes here at the top, which is okay. I don't really feel that that's necessary and it kind of gives you less choices when you're making that first knot down. And then it's got, you know, enough small going down at the bottom and the standard bottom string holes. But overall, got a really nice pocket in it. Um, even if you don't string a super high pocket related pattern, it's going to shift up a little bit because of that tight face right here is going to let the mesh release up here in the top. And so this pocket turned out really great with our new zones, Hero 2.0. Um, one thing I didn't love is they had a really fat bottom rail. So right here, this face is really, really fat, which makes it hard to get really tight knots. Um, it's good for stiffness, but overall, I like it to be a little more thin there. It reminded me of how C-Channel felt where it was hard to get your knots really tight and they tend to shift around a little bit. Overall, I think that this is a really great head. If you're a guy that liked the CEO because of that face shape and the overall design, I think that this is pretty much a stiffer CEO. And so if that, if that was your thing, if you like the original Vapor as well, this head is gonna work very, very well for you. It's got a good weight to stiffness ratio. And again, that face shape 
straight from the CEO is really the defining factor. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think down in the comments. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, and have a great day.